know what's funny? While researching this topic, I found more chat boards and blog posts where people were freaking out about this phenomenon rather than actual articles and studies done on it. It's weird, not that many scientists really care about this subject to the point of dedicating years of their life to it. And I mean, I kind of get it. It's just one of those things that's cool for like three seconds and then you immediately forget about it. So that is why I am here to explain topics to you that you don't really care about in a fun way so that you are simultaneously bored and entertained. Today's topic is temporal processing, specifically the way we perceive the tempo of music at certain times of the day. But first, context. The thing about me is that I'm a big music guy, really big on music, and I listen to music pretty much all the time whenever I'm doing anything. That includes exercise. I do a lot of hit cardio, so I have a lot of short rest periods where it's just me and the music. And I noticed that during these brief moments of downtime, the music playing in my earbuds sounded slightly slower for some reason, like it was being played at 90% speed or something. That's really fucked up, I thought to myself. Why is that happening? Here's another thing. Back in high school, I used to have a sleeping problem. This will all make sense in a second, I promise. And there would be nights where I would wake up at three or four in the morning and then falling back asleep would just be impossible for me. So instead, I listened to music. I was too tired to do anything of value, so the only thing I could do was sink into my mattress while Les Claypool serenaded me with his angelic voice and balladic bass playing. And during these sleepless nights, I would notice a similar effect to what I was witnessing during my workouts. The tempo of the song sounded off, except this time, it sounded faster than usual. Dude, like, right? I started researching this effect by asking everybody I knew if they had experienced something like it. Some of them knew what I was talking about, some of them didn't want to talk to me. Long story short, I wasn't the only one. This was a thing. And I wanted to find the science behind this horseshit because clearly nobody with qualification cared enough to do so. So while most of this video is going to be speculative theory crafting, hopefully by the end I will have made a convincing argument for why I think this happens. Our perception of time, this temporal processing that I mentioned earlier, is heavily linked to our motor activity. A study by the Royal Society published in 2012 found that professional ball game players, yes that's verbatim how they put it, felt like the ball in their ball game of choice would slow down before they struck it and went on to do the rest of the ball game activities. That is straight up some anime shit right there. It is crazy the things our brain can pull sometimes. I'm telling you, humans are fake. What the study covers however is kind of different to what I'm talking about today so I won't dwell on it too much, but to grossly oversimplify, they had a bunch of different trials where they had the participants react with a specific movement in response to visual stimuli as fast and as accurately as possible, and then they asked the participants if they found the duration of the visual stimuli to be long or short. And the study proposed that, quote, the temporal dilation during action preparation reflects the function of the brain to maximize the capacity of sensory information acquisition prior to the execution of a ballistic movement. Basically, what these goofballs are saying is that in response in response to a physical task that requires a lot of alertness and precision, our brain sort of acclimates by processing external stimuli faster than normal, which may be the reason behind this sort of time warp effect. Like I said, their research is slightly different to mine, but the main point is that physical activity does somehow impact our brain's perception of time. 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 So far, all this seems kind of obvious, right? Well, that's because it is. Obviously, our brains will somehow adapt to our surroundings, but how does this all connect to what was happening to me? Because my experience does not involve balls or quick reaction times, it involves heavy breathing and sweat. Earlier, I mentioned that I am particularly fond of HIIT cardio. H-I-I-T stands for High Intensity Interval Training, so think of stuff like burpees, mountain climbers, exercises that involve a lot of fast movement that really get your heart pumping. And when your heart starts pumping, more oxygen flows to your brain. Brain. And there are a lot of effects that aerobic exercise has on our cognitive abilities, you can research that in your own time, but one of them just so happens to involve processing speed. Now I should probably mention that in the world of science nothing is ever as simple as just run make brain go fast, but it is worth noting that the oxygenation of the brain increases the production of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters do exactly what their name suggests, they send information from neurons to other neurons or from neurons to muscles, they're like the carrier pigeons for your brain. Dopamine, which exercise boosts the release of, is 
is a neurotransmitter. Aside from being known as the happiness hormone, dopamine can increase concentration, attention span, motivation, as well as potentially being able to increase processing speed, which might be one of the many things contributing to the time dilation effect. And there have been some studies done to see if the increase of dopamine affects the internal clocks of animals and the way they perceive time. This one, for instance, tested the reaction times of mice with varying levels of dopamine. They injected some of the mice with drugs that trigger the release of dopamine and suppress the dopamine neurons in others. A little similar to the ball game study, except this one involves less balls and more mice. And the results of these experiments were... uh, fucking nuts, to say the least. The scientists played two tones for the mice, and then the mice, which were trained for months to give specific responses based on the duration of the tones, would then classify the tone as short or long. I don't know how scientists do this shit, but that's the shit that was done. And they discovered that there might be a causal link between dopaminergic neurons and the way animals judge time. Because when the mice were zoinked on happy juice, their response to auditory tasks were faster than usual, implying a faster reaction time. So then we cracked it, right? No. Fucker, if it were that simple, I wouldn't be making this video after all. The downside of testing on animals is that there's no way to know how they are perceiving things. We can only analyze their behavior. And not only that, but the results of the experiments were a little mixed at times. So while it is a fascinating study, it's not gospel and not going to be enough for my final theory. And plus, this is all mouse brain talk. I'm not a mouse, so let's keep digging. As we've established, there's no one thing that causes this phenomenon. There's a ton of internal and external components that could all be contributing to this. There's even some shit about sound waves traveling faster at night because of dense air particles or the humidity or something, but I'm not gonna get into that. I'm interested exclusively in the psychological and the physiological aspects of this phenomenon. I wanna know why our body makes us experience this shit. Speaking of nighttime, what about the other side of the phenomenon? What about when the music sounds faster? Being in a quiet dark room on the verge of falling asleep is a little different to being in a loud ass gym pumping iron with 70 brolic men all moaning and groaning in your left and right ear. Not only are you not releasing all those tasty brain boosting chemicals we talked about, but there's also nothing to really stimulate the senses with, which ironically makes our brain more amped up but not in the same way exercise does. This part is a bit fucky, so just bear with me for a second, okay? Our brains aren't more alert at night per se, but they are more sensitive to stimulation. During exercise, our brain adapts to the abundance of stimulus, thereby making everything else feel slower and easier to follow, while during sleepy time, our brain gets used to the lack of stimulus and becomes more susceptible to sensory overload. Think of it this way. Some people, like myself, have trouble sleeping when there isn't some kind of mild bullshit going on in the background keeping me company. It sounds counterintuitive, but sometimes when a room is too quiet or too dark or too peaceful, it may actually be harder to fall asleep for some. Since there's no external stimulus distracting us, our brains are free to do whatever they want. There's nothing to focus on, nothing to do, so our thoughts start racing, we start tossing and turning, and next thing you know, it's 5 a.m. on a school night and you haven't gotten a minute of sleep. That's also why a lot of people with ADHD suffer from sleeping disorders, because for us, that shit is amplified to the extreme. That's why a lot of people put on white noise or rain sounds when they go to bed. It functions as a sort of anchor, something to pacify the brain and keep it focused while the body falls asleep. Of course, this doesn't apply to all people, but it applies to me and that's all that matters. So how does this all tie back to the main plot of my thesis? Well, since our brains are more awake, quote unquote, in the dark of night when there isn't much shit going on, our perception of stuff like sound frequencies may be amplified. Therefore, we might start perceiving auditory information as being slightly faster than we would, say, on a busy highway, or in broad daylight, or during a workout. Our brain simply cannot catch up because it is too tired. I don't know about you, but when I'm deprived of sleep, loud sounds and bright lights freak me the fuck out. 
because it is a sudden onset of intense stimulation. It's something that would already be startling when I'm wide awake, but the effect is more impactful because of the brain's dulled ability to process information. Maybe I'm just stupid and overthinking things, but this shit sounds downright, downright paradoxical, paradoxical to me. When we're awake, our brains are faster and more alert, but their perception of things feels slower, and when we're tired, our brains are slower but also faster, and therefore every little sound and visual stimulation feels like a fucking jump scare. You know how I mentioned that working out makes your brain high on oxygen? Well, missing sleep makes your brain high on the lack of oxygen. That's why we yawn. But yeah, uh, dopamine, external stimuli, oxygen, motor activity, something, whatever. I could just settle here and call it a day, but I, I don't wanna. All this is already a lot of dooky fuck shit, but what if I told you that we haven't even gotten to the most complex part of it all? That's right, it's time to talk about A couple of days ago, I presented my theories to my doctor, and he looked at me like I had just curb stomped a puppy to death, so you know I'm onto something. While he had never experienced the phenomenon I was talking about, he did tell me something interesting. He told me about the suprachiasmatic nucleus, a part of our brain located in the hypothalamus that acts as a sort of pacemaker for our body. It is responsible for generating our circadian rhythms, you know, our 24 hour clock that tells us to be energized during the day and sleepy during the night the way God intended, the thing that nobody fucking follows properly, yeah that thing. Here's how it works. When a person wakes up in the morning and light hits their eyes, the retinal ganglion cells send that photic input to the neurons in the suprachiasmatic nucleus, Jesus fucking Christ, I'm speaking Rick and Morty, and that input is then used to create the circadian, circadian rhythm. rhythm. Evolution was nice enough to idiot-proof our bodies to make it so that when we see light, we feel more awake. Keep in mind, I'm talking about your average, healthy human being. This is how they are supposed to function. I'm not taking into account people with fucked up sleeping schedules, caffeine addictions, night guards, whatever. I'm talking about the motherfucker playing on default settings, you know? This is why doctors recommend not looking at any computer or phone screens at least an hour before bedtime. The blue light that is emitted from these devices fucks with your body's production of melatonin, which consequently disrupts your circadian rhythm. Our bodies are just naturally programmed to be in the sunlight when we are awake and the dark when we are sleeping. And the doctor told me that maybe, since mental processing can be slower before the suprachiasmatic nucleus is stimulated with light, it might be affecting the way we perceive stuff like music. And keep in mind, when I first discovered this effect, I was sleep deprived. My processing speed wasn't just slowed down because it was late at night, I was getting three to four hours of sleep every night and then waking up in a pitch black room with nothing to do. I was basically a fucking carcass. And when the lack of external stimuli and body movement, the subpar amount of oxygen reaching my brain due to sleep deprivation, and the absence of sunlight all put their hands in a circle and did one of these hurrah things, they may have tricked my brain to thinking that the music I was listening to was sped up by about 10 beats per minute. <sighs> all right. Everyone still with me? So let me just say something that I probably should have said at the beginning of the video. I do not claim to know anything about psychology, neurology, etc. This isn't like a I've cracked it type video. This is all just for fun. My knowledge of all the stuff discussed in this video is pretty surface level and I'm sure I've missed a ton of nuances. So if a single qualified doctor watched this video, they'd probably arrest me and charge me with several counts of feeding horse shit to the public. But I looked and not a single person on YouTube had made a video about this phenomenon. So I wanted to at least bring some attention to it and maybe inspire someone to find an actual answer. But for now, this is all I got. I encourage you to try this for yourself, whether you're in school, college, or work that nine to five, we all have days where we have to to wake up at the crack of ass and force start the day. Next time that happens, just put some music on in the background while you're getting ready. Preferably something rhythmic because you really want to hear the BPM difference. Or you can do some cardio and see how the music sounds after you finish. And hey, even if you don't experience this trippy audio illusion, at least you got a good workout in. And now you'll live forever. forever.